Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Dubai Watch Week 2021. We're here at the Watch Box with the world's most famous millennial watchmaker, Recep Recepi. Thank you for coming to the show. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Now, many watchmakers from outside of Switzerland, Kerry Voudelainen, F.P. Jorn, Stephen Forsey, have come to Switzerland to practice. But I can't think of any other watchmakers who've come from Kosovo. What was your early life like in Kosovo? Did you have any early exposure to watches? Um, yes, my, my, my father, when he came to uh, visit us in, in Kosovo, um, he came in time with a watch. And, uh, and finally, I take it, this watch, and I, I'm trying to understand, but I was just seven, eight. And uh, this was really my first connection with, with watches. And you have this in mind. And um, when I come in Switzerland at 12, you came in the airport, you're seeing many of publicity, of watches, and this is really the, the first thing you remember about Switzerland, you know, so you coming into it more and more, you start to learn, and... Uh, Both you and your brother ultimately became watch craftsmen. Uh, did you come to Switzerland at the same time, or did he yeah. follow you? Yeah, yeah, we, we arrived in the same time, same day. Um, but he doing before he doing different. Um, he he was wood maker, and uh, after seeing my 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 life <laughs> in watchmaking, and uh, he want to join and he want to change his his um, his work. So after that, he doing also an apprenticeship in Patek. So now you signed with Patek at age fourteen. You started your five year apprenticeship at age fifteen. Was there ever a time when you considered a different career path other than watchmaking? No, really not. Because, uh, like, like I say, since uh, 12, I was totally sure about what I wanted. The through five years at Patek Philippe, obviously you started on simple tasks and became more advanced with time. Uh, but how did you progress? I mean, what did you start with as, as an intern or an apprentice? And then where were you by the time you left? And could you tell me a little bit about your progression of skills? Um, the apprenticeship, it was, it was really, really interesting because, you know, you move in all of the workshops, you know, different workshops. And uh, it was really good because you learned with, uh, with some important guy who has a lot of knowledge. And, you know, if you are passionate about it, you can really learn and you can go more in deep. And really important for me and a lot, lot of, of, I would say, most of the, of the skills in, for example, in decoration, uh, I learned there. So, so. So it was um, very, very important for me and really good memories. Um, but for sure, you know, in, in these big brands, for example, you need a lot of time to progress. And um, yeah, I had a lot of dream and, and uh, I want to going a little more fast than it was possible. Because you need, you know, to wait like two, three years in you know, one workshop when you start to work. And um, yeah, I wanted to go a little more fast. This is why I moved um, very early. Now at Patek Philippe, uh, you mentioned to me that there was a moment where you had an epiphany. The, the reference 5101 was very important to you and your career. Could you explain that? Yeah, you know, um, like I said, you're moving a little in the many, many workshop. And the first time uh, I saw this watch, I was 16. It was a dream one day to have a watch. But when I saw this watch, uh, I look at this watch for 45 minutes, I think, and I remember really how I appreciate, for example, the tourbillon, you know, because you have something very magic, you know. It's quite simple in the front, but when you turn the back, you see this tourbillon beautifully, beautifully done. And um, I realize at this moment, one day I want to have my personal watch, you know. I really want to have my personal tourbillon. And after that, really, I move forward with this idea of saying, OK, now I need to set up everything I can to one day be able to be independent. Now, from Patek Philippe, you moved on to B&B Concept, which is a high horology complication specialist now owned by Hublot. And though you don't have an engineering background, you did have a mentor who taught you engineering there. Could you talk a little bit about what you learned at B&B Concept? You know, BNB Concept was a um, crazy um, company because uh, everything was open. You know, uh, if you are interested on something, you you can have the possibility to go into it. And 
I, I start um, working for them at 21, and um, or at 20, sorry, at 20, and um, I start my first day working on the tourbillon. So it was quite uh, impressive, you know, and uh, I was scared a little, you know, but uh, they give you the, the possibility to, to learn and uh, you have the chance to, 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 to touch it. And uh, very quickly, if you are good, if, if you are passionate about it, they can give you many possibility. And, you know, you have a watch, it's still, it was not still very um, organized, uh, company, you know, so you can go in, you can work with engineers, you can talk with them, so you can learn more, you can understand how really a watch uh, is built, you know, and um, I think also this for me it was something very important to, to, to learn how you set up, you know, uh, also a company, what, what about you need to think, what you can have, uh, like, like what kind of problem you can have also. Um, when you construct a movement, and uh, and yeah, uh, but I'm I'm not an engineer. Is um, I like the technical part. Um, I'm I'm too slow. For example, if I need really to construct a, a, a watch, but uh, yeah, I, I prefer really the, the the watch making part, the realization of, of component, decoration, and for sure the ideas something I I like. As a necessary evil, the mathematics of watchmaking, computer-assisted design, did you learn that at BNB? No, 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 no. But you know, for example, what, what, how I see, for example, watchmaking for me today, you know, it's you thinking about an idea and you start to thinking about what kind of mechanism you can set up. You know, so this is something you can write, for example, in a, in a paper. But today we have really good tools, for example, like SolidWorks. Or um, I have an uh, engineer and you can bring this idea, you can discuss, and you start really to thinking about the thickness, about the size, and you start really to, do, to doing that. But today, I never really, uh, I never really uh, going into it. I'm, I'm too slow, I'm too slow. No, that's fair, I think you're way ahead of the game. What are you now, 34? Yeah. He's slow. Okay, so now moving on from BNB Concept, uh, you go to what is probably the hottest independent of our time, F.P. Journe under Francois Paul. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you learned from him and what you learned while working on those watches. For me, it was really a dream uh, one day to work for, for him. Like I say, you know, you are a watchmaker, you, you appreciate what, what watchmakers done, um, and, um, and for me, it was really a dream one day to work with him. And uh, finally, I had this change in 2010. And when I came, I realized how the guy think about everything, the watchmaking part, but the watchmaking, but, but also about the idea, you know, it's very clear, you know, he think about long term, you know, he, he set up all of this workshop in the, in the right way, you know, everybody are focused on, on the product you're doing your product from A to Z. So it was more about how he gave the responsibility to all of watchmakers to learn and also to be, because you know, when you finish a watch, you, know, you are uh, responsible about this watch for the next two years. You know? So I think it was really smart because you can see if this watch come back, you can also learn about it, what, you, what was wrong, you know? And uh, I think this kind of uh, steps for me, it was important because uh, today I do also the same. You know, for example, I give the possibility to all of our watchmakers to doing the watch from A to Z. If I start a watch, I really want to finish. And if I have a watchmaker start, I really want to finish his watch. So, at F. Pigeon or Montrejeune, you would assemble a watch from start to finish, and you'd yeah. be responsible for it. Yeah. And just think, somewhere in the world, there's a record of which Jorn watches he made. Look out for those. Moving on from F.P. Journ, but first let's speak about whether or not he encouraged you to strike out on your own. Obviously, he wouldn't want to lose a great watchmaker, but did he in any way encourage you to create your own enterprise and build your own watch? You know, I, I really realize how difficult it is and how important it is and how we think about it. You know, he constructs the product and I say, you know, if one day you want, you need to go 
in that, you know. So I was just impressed how he built uh, this. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was an encouragement because when you're seeing the collections, the product, you're saying, wow. Now, if you want to do something in your way with your aesthetics, you need to do that. And I can really see he was, um, he cared really about that. You know, he was every day there. He was in, in his bench. And, you know, I look at this like, uh, wow, how, how passionate you need to be, you know, and uh, about constructing something. So, so this just give you more, you know, more, uh, passion or, or how, how I can say more motivation more motivation yeah for, for, for accomplish it you know so so uh, you look at this wow you, you, you're trying to understand but it's it was a big motivation and inspiration for sure and uh, yeah for me it was the watchmaker I really wanted to to to, 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 to following you know and, and understand more this is why really it was for me I wanted to go in Binbe concept but after that my only dream was to go in to François Pajun and work in his company. You know, it was really a, a setup of my my process of, of learning uh, to be able one day to construct something. So now, from François Paul's atelier in 2012, you created a Crivia. Even François Paul had investors when he started his company, and most independents, even when there's one man's name on the door. Most independents have several investors at the time of startup. You created a Crivia from your own savings. Why didn't you bring in investors? Because, you know, I think at 25, you, you don't really realize what's happening in the industry. You don't really know how to do it. You know, still, I came with an idea of doing one watch, and that's it, you know. So I'm just trying to put some money on the back, you know, work and to, and I start this. And uh, I think because also my culture, you know, you, we grow and um, they wash your brain in same, in same I, don't, I would say like this, but you know, you need to do something in your own way. You know, you need to, to do something, you need to, to be happy with what you do. And, and for me, I just wanted to have, uh, to be freedom, to be free, you know, to, to have this freedom and to, to be able to doing what, what I want. And uh, also, you know, at 25, I think you can find somebody really who can... Because I think it, it's, it was a little different, I would say, 10 years ago and now, honestly. 10 years ago, when you go into somebody and say, OK, I need money to have it, to doing a watch, nobody really believe you, you know? And I realized this because when I'm doing my watch, even I, uh, I finish my watch, I present my watch, uh, we had, uh, we was happy because many people talk about uh, about us. But you know, the first two years, nobody really care. Nobody really uh, uh, invest on, on on this watch or say, okay, I want this watch and I like you because you are a good guy and uh, and I see you you are passionate. You know. So, in 2012, you create the company and initially your watches are tonneau shaped, fairly large and complicated. Uh, did you feel? that you needed to make a big statement with a large watch and a complicated watch as your initial products. Was there a reason why you chose to go for complexity instead of something more classically simple at first? Really, at 25, for example, and, and I say for you, uh, before, at, at 16, when I saw this watch, you know, I really started to love tourbillons. I had this possibility with the chronograph tourbillon, you know, to, to, have, uh, uh, to have this ebosh, you know, and, and I said, you know, this watch, it's the perfect watch to represent what I want to do. I had the tourbillon, I'm a big fan of chronographs. Uh, it's, uh, um, it's in front of the, of the dial, you know, the mechanism of, of the, the, the chronograph is, is in front of the dial. So you can uh, be able to decorate well, you know, you, it was a product who, who, can, who can, I can explain to all of, of, of collectors what I'm able to do and what I like. And I just thinking about that, you know, but I don't thinking about a strategy to doing maybe to start with a complicated watch. I just following my, my heart and, and, and I going with what I had in this disposition. Instinct. Yeah, yeah. So 
Now, around, I guess, 2014, 2015, you started realizing that uh, the case shape you'd chosen was maybe a little bit polarizing. Some people really liked it, some people really didn't, and you started thinking about doing something more classical. Uh, what was the source of your inspiration for the Chronomet Contempora? You know, I learned, I, I doing my apprenticeship in Batek, so for me, my education was more classic, you know. But in 2012, still, I wanted to do something different, you know. I think who, who can uh, show you, you, you you want to do something different, different aesthetic, and this is why I go in, in, in a way more contemporary. But the classic, it was every time in my, in my heart, every time in my, in my, my blood, I would say. And uh, this is why naturally I just say, okay, now I want to do in this classic watch, and, and I start also. You know, all the watches represent something in my, in my a moment in my life. And, and and the classic, for example, when I come with, with uh, this classic watch in 2018, it was because I just want a watch, uh, personal watch, you know, I want to wear more, more, more slim, more thinner, and, and uh, more discreet. Now, you just decide at some point that you were going to keep a Crivia, but you are going to open Regep Regepi, because the Chronomet Contempora is a Regep Regepi signed product. A Crivia still exists, and we've got the, the AK-06 on the table today. Why have two separate brands? You know, many people didn't really understand or, or see uh, when they saw a Crivia. They think it's a brand, you know, and they don't really know about a Crivia, and they, they don't imagine uh, I was a watchmaker, you know, and uh, I put my name in this line because I really want to show to the people, you know, it's a, it's a very authentic brand, you know, it's, it's, uh, I just, I'm a watchmaker and I'm the same guy who doing Acrivia and Recep Recepi and I just want to, to show it to everybody, uh, I'm, I'm the watchmaker, you know, um, and, and, um, and also, you know, I, when I start with Acrivia, I was not able, and I, I was not. I don't feel comfortable to put my name, you know, in, in the watch. And I saying, okay, you are 25. How you can put your name? You need really to show to the people still what what you are. And to put the name with, uh, for example, Acrivia I mean precision, it's accuracy, you know. Uh, I say maybe it's something will help me to show what I want to do. But yeah, I was totally wrong. Were you surprised by the reception, the amount of uh, approval, and interest you had in the Chronomet Contempora when that debuted in 2018? Um, when you leave hard times, you, you, you really never expect or you are every time afraid about being, having hard time, you know, and, and I was I just doing this watch and uh, I saying, I'm sure it will be better like uh, was every time because uh, when I start with the product with the second every time was better and better I didn't really realize we will have that demand for sure but I was sure one day it will be better you know? were you surprised that so many people wanted it immediately yes yes for sure y you know I, I don't know how to explain but uh, Today I can I, I'm not able to understand also or to to imagine how people want it. Uh, the only thing I, I know today, we just wake up in the morning, we go in the workshop, and I just want to do my best, my best, and to do better, really. And this my all my days are like that, you know. And and I think when you put a lot of effort, when you're trying to be open, to do something good, to be straight. I think people uh, at then will understand, but I was quite surprised to having that much demand. That it's crazy demand. Now, tell me a little bit about your workshop today, because you do have some watchmakers. You have an engineer. Uh, you have Jean-Pierre Hagman making cases. How many people are working at your company? How many of them are watchmakers, and about how old are they? We are quite young. Um, Mr. Agman is, uh, I would say, the most experimented guy. Um, but at 25, you don't know everything. And uh, still, you know, we learn every day. And uh, today, I invest to, in my learning uh, process. You know, I, I, 
I don't know how to do cases, so yeah, I, I go to a, a guy who is an expert and he wants to share. And for me, I think it's the most important case maker of the last 40 years. So, so I contact Mr. Hagman, I say, hey, if you want, did you want to, 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 to teach me how to do? And uh, he accepted, so I, I'm, I'm happy and maybe we'll do again with other people, but, but uh, we are young. Uh, the reason why we are young, because I think in some way we can be open about doing something. We, you know, I can put people following me on my philosophy and uh, I don't want to have people maybe are already, um, you know, set in their ways, you know, and, and yeah, Mr. Hagman, he, he is uh, on that way, but because I really love what he's done and uh, this, the, 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 the case he's done or the classic way he's done for, for, for many brands. So this why correspond to my, to my philosophy. But today we are, we are five watchmakers. We are uh, two engineer and three uh, uh, person who work with machines. So conventional machine. Are you also the president or CEO, or do you have a CEO to run the company? No, no, no. I'm, you know, I'm, I doing all this, this, this things. We doing a little more hours in the day, but we don't have the choice. We don't have the choice, and uh, you know, I really want to understand everything. I want to to see everything. I want to to do my watches. I want to decorate. I, uh, it's important for me to to know everything about my, my company. Now, in terms of the size of your production, is it 20 pieces a year? Approximately how many watches? No, we're do doing you? a little more, a little more. Still, you know, I, I really want to be happy with my quality. I want to be happy with the decoration, um, the aesthetics, and to bring uh, something new, uh, something new. So, so I just want to have the right size to still trying to evolve, to learning, um, to doing good watches, to be happy with uh, and proud and, and to enjoy again because, because uh, you know, it's important for, for me to not going at home and to be frustrated because you don't, uh, you're not happy with your watch. To be able to, to offer some watches uh, because people want it and, and um, I think you need to have a good size just to balance between all these, these uh, things. Now, I've heard you have capped the total production of all versions of the Chronomet Contempora at 200 movements. Yeah, this is when, when I came with, with this idea in 2018, I wanted to do it yeah, 200 and that's it. You have a waiting list that could potentially be years long if you let it get that long. How do you deal with accepting orders? How do you prioritize who gets a watch when there's so much demand and so little production? This is really, um, this is really complicated for me, honestly, and um, and uh, yeah, we're trying to, to be, uh, to give to the right people, you know, to, to, to understand who they are, what they want, and and uh, to just care about about our watches because we don't doing that much and and need to go into the right hand, um, but honestly, today, I don't want to to manage it, this anymore. I'm, I'm just want to be focused on that, and then I say to to all of collectors, it's important to respect the philosophy. I'm trying to do my best. If I'm able to do more watches, I will. But at this moment, it's the only I, I can do it more. I can do it more because I really want to, to progress in decoration. I want to do better and. Uh, I can do it, I can do more. So you're focused on the watchmaking, not the business, not the politics. Do you have someone else who manages sales and deliveries for you? Yeah, uh, you know, we, we I, I have, um, we, I work with family, you know, so, so, so I work with my friend, uh, my, 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 my partner. Um, I work uh, with my brother. Uh, my brother manage uh, also watchmaking, so he helped me in the, in the workshop, but, but, um, Annabelle, um, Annabelle, she manage more uh, the sales and uh, manage more the collectors, and we have also retailers um, in the Middle East and Asia. So, 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 yeah. 
Now, you decided recently to redesign the Chronomed Contempora. One of the earliest examples went at only watch for eight times the estimate, which was phenomenal. Congratulations on that. But why did you decide to change a model that was already selling well? You, you changed the drivetrains, you added the jumping second, you really redesigned everything from the lugs to the movement. Why change when it was already so popular? Because, you know, this is what I, 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 I said to you, you know, I wake up in the morning and then I'm passionate about that and I don't really see the trend or what the demand, you know, I just want to do a watch and I don't think that much, you know, and, and for me, I like the chronomet contemporain, but I want to do it better. I think you need to do it better, and it's what at this moment I want. I feel I can do something more interesting, uh, to be more happy. And you know, if one day you wake up and you want to do something different, or, or you don't want to do any more a watch, I think you should not do because it's it's going with the, with the passion, you know. And like I say, I'm not the guy I want to going at home for a trip. And uh, it's important to. I'm, I'm a little selfish. That's okay. But uh, I, uh, I think like that you, you can't you can also create and you want to do better. You want to to challenge yourself and and uh, yeah. On this watch, I think it's totally movement. It's a, a totally new movement. It's uh, the same line, but it's a new case. So Mr. Hagman did it. So now I think this watch corresponds more to me. But but. Maybe in, in three years I will say something differently, you know, so. Now I have a question, because you've mentioned many times that there was a lot you didn't know when you were 25. I don't know, I think you knew quite a bit more than I do when you were 25, but maybe compared to your current self, you knew less. Considering that many folks who are young now are looking into careers in watchmaking, what advice would you give to the 25-year-old version of yourself, or even the 15-year-old version who started at Tech? What would you want to tell that young man that he needs to know? Um, when I start, I was really enthusiastic. You know, I was, uh, you know, I wanted and I believe and I dream, and I don't really know about what's happened. You know, and, and it was a hard time for, for two years. So, and you start to lose yourself. You know, a little you, you you start to question yourself, what you want to do, are you sure? And you start to to have people who can advise you. You know, you should doing this, you should doing this. And you start to, okay, maybe I should do this, but, but the only advice I can say to people, if sometimes it's hard, yes, it's life. You need to be focused, you need to be strong, but it's really, really important to take your decision with your, with your feeling, you know? It's, it's really, really important, and, and uh, today, I just do that, you know? I'm, 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 I will be wrong sometime, but it's okay, I will learn. But it's important really to, to stay focused and to stay uh, strong and motivated. And true to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's watchmaking. You start with something. If you start, you need to be passionate at the end, you know, and then uh, everybody who today starts something is passionate, you know, because you have too many sacrifices, too many challenges, so I think I think just keep that and, and one day you will do something or maybe not everybody will like it, but one day I'm sure somebody will like it and life is up and down and keep working, keep working. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs>